Hello my friends, uh, you may recall that last week uh, I uh, gave myself a compliment and called myself Ohave Gare. We were talking about Gerim and I told you uh, uh, I, what I consider a background story to what we're going to discuss now and I simply want however to repeat that everything that I'm telling you now of course it's true but more important uh, I say nothing without the permission of the star of this particular video, whose name is Ehud. Ehud Naor. Okay. I was a uh, volunteer rabbi in uh, Romema in Haifa. And one Friday night, at the end of davening, I come out of the Beit Knesset and there's this uh, young man uh, standing there, looks like a goy, uh, and he approaches me and he says, uh, are you the rabbi? And, uh, but he said it in Hebrew, Atahagav, so that I could answer him, Kain, ani ravim kulam, Kain. So, anyhow, I said, yes, I'm the rabbi, what can I do for you? He says, uh, I'd like to discuss with you the idea of Giyur. I want to become Jewish. Wow, I said, uh, listen, it is now Leo Shabbat. I uh, want to go home to make Kiddush for my family. Now is not the time for me to talk about Giyur. And also, I want you to know that uh, technically, uh, I am uh, a musmach, I am a, an Orthodox rabbi, and a nice one. But, but, uh, officially, I do not belong to the rabbinate, so I don't even know if I can really help you. However, if you want uh, me to get involved, uh, I want to ask you two questions. And according to your answers, I will decide whether I will invite you to my house, Mosei Shabbat, for a conversation. What are the questions? Question number one Are you normal? And he said, I think so. Question number two, what's her name? And he said, there isn't any. I said, you're normal, and what's her name? There isn't any. You can come to my house, Motzei Shabbos, and we'll see what's going on. Motzei Shabbat, he comes to the house, and I say, what is your name, <laughs> my dear friend? And he says, uh, my name? You want my real name? I said, yeah. Should I hold on? He says, you better. Because my name is William Luce the Third. And I say, William Luce the Third? Between the Third and the Luce, I'm getting a little bit uh, uptight. Tell me. I know the name Luz. Uh, there was or is a Claire Booth Luz who was the U.S. ambassador to England. That's my aunt. Uh, there is a Henry Luz who was the editor of Time magazine. That's my uncle. I said, oh my God, you are really crazy. You want to become Jewish? you blue blood want to become Jewish? And he says yes. And I say, why? And then I got my friends, what I told you I heard on Purim. I, I, it's true. He says, I learned Jewish philosophy. And I came to the conclusion that the true religion is Judaism. And therefore I want to become Jewish. So I decided just to show you <laughs> how smart and ignorant the guy could be. He says, 
So I decided to come to Israel and to go to a university where I can learn Judaism. So I came to Haifa to learn Judaism at Haifa University. So I didn't want to really hurt his feelings and say, if you want to come to Haifa University, you can learn Islam. Anybody want to sue me from Haifa University? I don't care, I taught there. Uh, you want to learn Judaism at Haifa University? That, that's why you came to, to Haifa? Anyhow, that was our first conversation. Uh, William Luce III began coming to shul every Shabbat. And then I, ha I had what we call shtick with him. Uh, he would, this, he decided to come to shul every morning. I should admit in public when where the rabbis of Zichron can get at me that I don't always get to shul every morning. But I don't. Anyhow, I'm not proud of it, but it's true. He started coming to shul every morning. And very often there was just a minion or there wasn't a minion and somebody had the your site and wanted to say Kaddish. A guy gets up and he wants to say Kaddish and I go and he says, well, and I say, because there's no minion. He says, Rabbi, can't you count to ten? So I'm going to start telling him, yeah, but number ten isn't Jewish. And so this happened a few times, uh, which it was a very interesting shul. Uh, <laughs> I can't help it, I'm going to tell you something else, then we'll stop for a minute. Anyhow, so he came to shul every day, and I always got into these, this problem of I have to tell people that I can also count to ten, but he doesn't count. Uh, but what happened was, there was a guy in shul, I have to tell you this story, and then we'll have a cut and get back to it soon. There was a guy in shul, an elderly gentleman, um, who uh, liked to daven from the omelet. Now he was not a big mumcha, and he would get up uh, to daven, and uh, and and uh, when he uh, before Pesuke de Zimra, uh, he would say, "Not umidina shel gehenom, I'm slicha." I goofed it. Instead of saying. Uh, umidina shel gehenom, he would say umidina shel gehenom, and everybody would laugh. So one day I got a hold of him and I said, the end of that portion is not midina shel gehenom, even if it is, but it's midina shel gehenom. He says, thank you, Rabbi, for correcting me. The next morning he smiles because I can see that he's going to remember what I said the day before. And he yells out when he gets to the end of Medina Shogehenom, he says, The Hamedina Shogehenom. <laughs> Anyhow, that's the kind of a minion that we had. Okay? Can we stop for a moment and get back to things? With your permission. Uh, Ehud became not only uh, a close friend, but actually we can say that he was uh, an adopted son. This was before I had a boy. I had four girls, but I didn't have Yohanatan. And uh, eventually he met a, uh, he went through Giyur. And this was also a story which, it's not nice, but I have to tell it. Uh, he went down to the Rabbanut, and uh, the first thing that he had to do when he said he wants to become Jewish, he had to open up a tick. You know what a tick is? He opened up a tick, 
and he started learning Yahadut and he was told that he should come back uh, once a month or something like that in, in order to uh, that the rabbis of the Bedin will see what he has already accomplished if he accomplished anything and accept and do what they can uh, to uh, facilitate his becoming a Jewish. I must say in parentheses, I'm not sure of this, but I've been told that one of the reasons that uh, the Batei Din make things quite difficult for candidates of Giyur uh, is because they are afraid that there may be uh, sleeper agents uh, spies, etc., who can cause problems, and therefore they have to be very, very careful who they're going to accept into Judaism. Maybe yes, maybe no. Anyhow, he began uh, the process, and uh, it didn't take long, and he knew everything. When I say he knew everything, it was like, you know, uh, like, like an old yeshiva book. Uh, until at one point he says to me, look, uh, he always called me Rabbi, look Rabbi, uh, I uh, already have gone through over a year uh, of learning Yahadut. I know more than most of the guys in shul. Last Yom Kippur, I fasted, but it didn't count. I would like, with now Chodesh Elul, beginning of Elul, I would like this year, by Yom Kippur, that my fasting should count, that, I should, that I'll be Jewish. So I said, look, sounds to me, it sounds uh, very reasonable. There's no question about it that you know more than most people. There's no question about it that you go to shul more often than most people. So, next time you go to the rabbinate, why don't you ask them? Say to them exactly what you said to me. Unbelievable how stupid I could be. Uh, and see what happens. Goes to the rabbinate. And before uh, they begin to ask him questions, he says, I, I would like to make a statement. I've been learning Judaism for almost two years. I went through one Yom Kippur, not as a Jew. I would like Mirat Hashem to be Jewish by Yom Kippur in order to get credit. I need university credit. The Av Din, who was very, um, understanding says to him don't you tell me when you're going to become Jewish we'll tell you when you'll become Jewish and then the Av Bedin Av HaGaon says to Billy uh, do you know what bracha do you make on bread and Billy couldn't take that and he said if you would put in front of me a plate with 15 different kinds of vegetables and fruit, etc., I could tell you which bracha comes first. You're really asking me if I know the bracha on bread? And then Billy showed him that he was born a, an independent guy. He took off his yarmulke. And he said, I don't need your damn Judaism. And he left. True story. He came back to me crying. And he told me what happened. I didn't know what to do. First of all, I felt guilty that I thought that, you know, an Av Bedin is a Rav Gaon. You know. Gaon can also be, in English, a goon. Yeah. Anyhow, so what did I do? I make this mistake all the time. I called him. Kvod Harav. There must have been a misunderstanding. Because this boy has, before I could finish the sentence, this boy has, I got 
אתה מתערב בתהליך הגיור, and he hung up on me. For those who didn't understand the Hebrew, you, can, you don't have to understand it. I didn't know what to do. I knew that there was in Gush Etzion, in Harav Amital Zazal, Yeshiva, there was some kind of a machon for Giyur. I was able to arrange, I told Billy, I said, look, Hatik Shocha Pol Saruf, you know, your investment in paying <laughs> the Rabbanut of Haifa <laughs> is out the window. He went there. He started learning Chevruta with Harav Amita. After a while, Harav Amital calls me and says, I don't know what to do with Billy because he knows more than most of my Talmidim here. So I said, you know what I would like to do, if, if it's all right with you? I want to try to send him to Harav Gore. Harav Amital, Kim Muvan agreed. I choke up because we're dealing, when I talk about Harav Amital or Harav Lichtenstein or others of that caliber, I'm talking about Sadiqim. And these guys don't run around calling themselves Harav Agon. Anyhow, Harav Amital agreed. I called up Harav Goran and I asked him if he would mind meeting this guy. He went to Arav Goran. I got, not only did Harav Goran make a bet din, and he himself, Gier et Billy, but Arav Goran said to me, I never saw someone more worthy of becoming Jewish than him. And if I have any chaticha in Gan Eden with all my Averod, that's it. Anyhow, that's not the end of the story, but well, just a little bit more. Uh, some things which are unbelievable, I still, don't, I, I still can't believe it. Uh, I told, I think I, I told you already that uh, Ehud, who was once Billy, uh, married a student of mine who came from a Bayit Chiloni and became Maud, 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 Datiya. And they were my, always my guests in Chagim and, and etc. Uh, but there were a few things that I never know whether it was good or bad. He decided that he wanted to go to Gush Katif. And the Gush, the Gush Katif story is next.